world is changing with accelerating speed. To lead in shaping a new world order for the 21st century. Let's take you to Lebanon, Missouri, where the high school principal, a fellow by the name of Kevin Lowry, Lowry, that is to say, there he is right there. Uh, you know, the PC police uh, make it impossible to use the name God in a public setting. And yet, he did just that. And just in case you're interested, during my moment of silence, I gave thanks to God for these great students. I love the fact that he said uh, in a secular society it would be inappropriate to mention God. And then he did. And he reflected on how God is a part of the fabric of America. I'm here tonight to give a non-sectarian secular invocation that will reflect the fact that we are now a diverse community of members of many faiths and of none, as our president reminds us. Our new Secretary of Education in Florida recently appointed AIR to receive the $220 million contract for end of course exam testing. Please go on their website. Click the link to what they're doing with youth and you will see what their agenda really is. They are promoting as hard as they can any youth that is interested in the LGBT agenda and even name it 2 hyphen S which they define as having two spirits. The Bible says a lot about being double-minded. These people that will now receive $220 million from the state of Florida unless this is stopped, will promote double-mindedness in state education and attract every one of your children to become as homosexual as they possibly can. The principal of D.C.'s largest public high school, Wilson High School, made what might have been one of the biggest announcements of his life, saying that he is gay while at the school's annual LGBT Pride event on Wednesday. Today, he came him. out with cheers from his students, Mayor Gray on one side, Council Member Catania on the other. I just turned 50 a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, just something kept saying, I'm tired of hiding. K. Hall chose the second annual LGBT Pride event at Wilson High to make his announcement. For him, it seemed like the perfect time and place. If I was going to stand in front of these kids today saying we're, we're celebrating our, our pride and, and you can be who you, want, who you are, and I, I would be a hypocrite if I continue to hide. A planned protest is expected to take place here at Wilson High. Mayor Vincent Gray had a clear message for them. In my uh, best biblical reference, they can go straight to hell. Cahill says times have changed since he was young and school pride celebrations like the one today would have been very unlikely. I'm disappointed and uh, uh, I, I hate to go out this way. Leon McCoy has been speaking at Winfield High School's graduation as far back as he can remember, but he won't be this year because the Board of Education says the school has gotten complaints that McCoy's speeches contain too many religious references and violate the Supreme Court's ruling banning prayer in public schools. He gives to these kids and a year in and year out. And to see him not be able to speak, you know, on their behalf this year is just a shock to me. After hearing the news, some graduating seniors say they felt cheated. He spoke at all three of my siblings' graduation, and so I've always wanted him to speak at mine. Hunter Sheldon and his friends started a petition to try and get the coach back on the agenda for graduation. They say students are always inspired by his speeches. The graduations I've been to, you know, the whole crowd's cheering and the religion issue's never really been a problem. It's continued even after it was made, you know, illegal. Hello everybody, an outraged mother is taking on a high school drama teacher who allowed a student award ceremony to turn vulgar. Couple Forest Mark Miller explains why that parent was so offended and what the school district is doing about it. She certainly knows how to draw the spotlight. 
I wouldn't want a teacher like that in my school. Drama club advisor Terry Grimes is in trouble. <laughs> the parent says Grimes and some of her students on stage used the F word and other profanities and performed a skit about a priest wanting to have sex with kids. Then there were the awards for horniest stud and horniest girl, with the winner presented with what appeared to be a box of sex toys. The goal of Common Core is to put students on a level playing field and help prepare them for a global economy. The federally controlled program Common Core seeks to put all students, preschool through high school and beyond, under a standardized regime. The goal being to increase math and English skills for the almost 100 million students nationwide. Parents from coast to coast, however, have been shocked and have filed complaints at ridiculously complex methods being taught to solve basic mathematical problems or the use of dumbed-down texts to teach reading. But parents' complaints have been largely ignored. In fact, at least two parents were jailed for complaining about Common Core, causing many to draw comparisons to a fascist dictatorship's control over the nation's educational system. Okay. Hey, this is parents paying for. We're this is not a CNN political pay. Let's go. This is paying. Let him ask his question. This is what I will say. Parents that are going to ask questions. We do have some that are dovetailing to that. Let him ask his so, question. So the next question. So this, this is a dovetail. Listen, don't stand for this. Try, you're sitting here like cattle. You have questions. You confront them. They don't want to do it in public. Okay. But surely, this is not a fascist takeover of our educational system, is it? If that were the case, America would have to be living under a de facto fascist dictatorship. Unfortunately, that is exactly what we are living under. Obama has altogether dispensed with the rule of law, proclaiming often that, if Congress won't act, I will. The most detailed analysis to date of Common Core, a Pioneer Institute report, Common Core, per the report, seeks to, quote, produce workers for the global economy. And now Michelle Obama has openly called for children to spy on their parents as well. This is exactly what the Hitler Youth were engaged in under the Nazi regime. Still thinking we're not living under a de facto fascist dictatorship? Think again. When you think about great leaders in the world, you know, world history, mm -hmm. whose words still influence today, there are many names that come yes. to mind. You got your Abe Lincoln, you got your JFK, mm -hmm. you got your MLK Jr. Yeah. What about Adolf Hitler? No. Hmm. No. Take a look at this. It's a Bible school in Alabama, and they put up a billboard with a quote from the Nazi leader. It says, he alone who owns the youth gains the future. The billboard was promoting education for children, featured kids of diverse backgrounds. Well, sure. The school now admits probably a bad decision <laughs> to quote Hitler and says, no surprise, hmm. they're going to take that sucker down. Oh, they're going to take it down. <laughs> How okay. many people did it have to go through? That's the thing. It's so heartbreaking that it's laughable. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about it. An officer responsible for the safety of students at Oakland High School instead caught punching a student 
a student who has cerebral palsy and uses a wheelchair. The fact that it happened to a student who has cerebral palsy only compounds the damage and how awful this incident is. The incident unfolded on a school video camera early last week. Officers were urging lingering students to go to class. School officials say the student refused or wasn't moving fast enough when Marcel Mitchell started pushing the wheelchair. Martinez says he had protested when the security guard tried to clear the hall and wheel him to class. He says the guard handcuffed him and he admits spitting on the guard in protest just before the beating on the tape. I was handcuffed. I had no way to defend myself by my mouth. But Martinez says what was not caught on the tape was the guard beating him and throwing him to the ground on the elevator ride just minutes before. We have never invested as much in public education as we should have because we've always had kind of a private notion of children. Your kid is yours and totally your responsibility. We haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. As we first reported last night, the Baltimore City Council has given its approval to what will be one of the strictest curfew laws in the country. Tonight we go in focus for a look at just how this new law is going to be put into action. Well, supporters say it'll keep kids safe. And like the current curfew, children found after hours by police will not be arrested, just taken to a new connections center. The vote was 13 to 2 in favor of the new curfew law. Carl Stokes was one of those two no votes. I think this is definitely a bill that identifies kids in certain neighborhoods. He doesn't buy the argument from supporters that the curfew is aimed at helping children, saying he believes after hours interactions with police will be something like this. I'm not going to stop and tell your mom. I'm not going to stop and tell your dad. I'm going to take you right over to this juvenile detention center, juvenile curfew center or whatever you want to call it. They want to call it a youth connection center. Eventually, the mayor would like to have one youth connection center in each of the nine police districts to keep children who are brought in closer to home. The center will be staffed by city employees who can assess young people and determine how to connect them with whatever support they might need to keep them from having to be brought back. We begin with breaking news in Orange County. Dana Hills High School is on lockdown this afternoon. A carrying case for a shotgun or rifle was found on the campus. Just within the last couple of minutes or so, the all clear was given here at Dana Hills High School. You can see that the kids are now being let out in droves. What began as a scary afternoon has ended safely. No weapons were found. My son is texting me from inside. What's he saying? He's saying that he's fine and um, they're barricaded in a room. 3,000 students and staff at Dana Hills High School were locked down, told to shelter in place for hours this afternoon after an empty carrying case for a rifle was discovered in a campus parking lot. Especially what happened in Santa Barbara. The kids should just go to school and be safe. All call and emails were sent by the administration notifying families of the disturbing discovery. Dozens of officers and the Orange County Sheriff's SWAT team with its armored vehicle rolled onto campus and began an all-out search. Classrooms, lockers, cars, and the school grounds for a weapon. Authorities say there were no threats received. You'll see the SWAT team is out here. The critical incident response team is also here. Uh, not because any weapon was seen or a threat was made, but simply because we need the additional manpower to search a campus of this size. But the, it is scary to them to see guard dogs and SWAT team members going up and down their school and just in light of recent incidences, not knowing what could happen is very scary to them. A couple of photographs, these are our cell phone photos that were taken by one student who was sheltering in place for about three hours this afternoon. In the case of some kids, they say that their teachers turned off all the lights and they hid under the desks. But again, all kids are safe. No weapons found on campus. There were no threats made to this campus, Dana Hills High School. Only the discovery of this carrying case for the rifle. It is unclear who that carrying case belongs to and who may have left it there.